better thing to speak on is honor. But before we do, we gotta have a couple jokes. Nothing personal, Pastor. Uh, the pastor said one Sunday, hey, we're gonna have a board meeting after church. So, as our pastor often says, so uh, all the board members went back and this, this stranger walked in and the uh, pastor said, well, what, do you, what are you doing here? This is the board meeting. He said, well, I was just as bored as anybody else. <laughs> and then this, uh, this couple, they invited the pastor over for, for dinner after church. So the pastor was in the living room with this little boy, their little boy, and they were both in the kitchen. He said, son, what are, what are we having for, for lunch today? And he said, goat. He said, goat? He said, yeah, on the way home, my daddy said, now's as good time as ever to have the old goat over for dinner. <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, <clears throat> we're here to honor the pastor and Carol today. Uh, behind every good man, there's a good woman. How many of us say amen to that? Amen. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our wives. So uh, I looked up in Webster's, it says, honor to regard and treat with honor, respect to confer honor, on to and live up to the full to, and fulfill full the terms. So I think that pretty much describes our pastor. Uh, Several years ago, uh, we were left in a lurch without a pastor. Called my uh, good friend, Walter Smith. He was presbyter for Assembly of God. And I said, Walt, well, we're in a kind of a fix. We're out of a pastor. C could you give me a list of maybe some pastors that's retired and or interim pastors? So he gave what he was on the list. And I called and he said, hi, this is Woody. <laughs> I said, well, we're looking for a pastor. I think you were at the dentist or something then, or doctor. You were the, you know, I didn't answer the phone? Yeah, you answered, but you said, I'll call you back. Oh. But anyway, he called us back, and oddly enough, that night we were having a board meeting, and him and Carol came over, and uh, we fell in love with him right away. Besides that, he told me he fished and tied flies, so he had my vote right off the bat. But anyway, how many years has that been? Six now? Seven? Uh, six or so. I don't yeah. But anyway, uh, he, he came to us in a time where we were hurting. Uh, the whole church was hurting. We were in disarray. And uh, he, he taught us what it was to forgive and not only forgive, to forget. And it, it took us a while, but we're... I think we're all on an even keel now, and we want to go ahead. And, uh, you know, a lot of churches have programs. You know, either everybody's looking for a program now. But you know what? It says in the Word, not by might, not by power, but through my spirit. That's what we have, the spirit of the living God here. And the spirit breaks the oak, and where the spirit is, there's freedom. Yes. And uh, that's why somebody can come in here, Paul come in, and he said, I, I feel the spirit, I, I feel freedom. That's what we want. We want to reach out to that, because a hurting world, because there's a lot of hurting people that go by this sign every day, every day, thousands. So we need to just... Uh, this, this church isn't full, but all we need to do is pray them in. And, uh, but anyway, way, uh, honor is mentioned 355 times in the, in the Bible. Uh, so God must have thought it was pretty important, you know, for, to, for, to have honor. And, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I have a good feeling of what honor means because... I spent 20 years at a correctional boot camp. And when I first started there, I thought, felt like I was drafted into the military because it was very strict. 
it was a, a military based compound and I was never in the military but I I learned how to salute I learned how to stand position of attention I learned how to stand at POA do you know there's 10 positions for the position of attention I learned how to blouse my boots I learned how to polish my boots so I could see myself in them every day I learned how to put all my medals on it used to take me about 20 minutes to put all my medals on each day and it was very strict we had to, to salute all the commissioned officers uh, from lieutenant up uh, when you seen them you had to stop and salute them the inmates had to stop 10 feet from the staff and say by your leave sir and it, it was very strict now it's still a good place it just kind of went went by the wayside but you better starting there you better you better have your uniform pressed and you better look look the part and you better come to morning colors and evening colors where they put the flag up and took the flag down so uh it was a big adjustment for me but uh it was but the thing of it was you couldn't you couldn't say to those inmates you do this and this and this and not show yourself as worthy right. respect I remember the commander down there told me one time Scott he said respect can't be commanded or demanded it has to be earned and to get honor you have to have respect so I learned early on that I had to I had to get respect by earning it but I also had to get them to give me respect because I said one thing I won't tolerate don't disrespect me if you want my respect you earn it and I'll earn yours and I I was good with that and they were good with that but they used to have a sign down there in the hallway the only easy day was yesterday and practice what you preach so we can't say one thing and live another way. We have to, we have to practice what we preach. And uh, I think our pastor has, Pastor, you've earned my respect a long time ago. You and Carol both. And, uh, and we, we're here to honor you today. And uh, in the Old Testament, respect or honor means kabod, K-A-B-O-D. And kabod means weight or glory. And in the New Testament, it means timeo, T-I-M-A-O. And that means reverence and personal value. So, uh, because God the Creator embodies all glory as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, He is worthy of our reverence. We just sang that song. Man, that really tied in, Bob, with my message. But you know to give honor and glory you know and uh, I'm gonna read a scripture here it's first Timothy 5 17 and 18 and uh, it says the elders who direct the affairs of the church well worthy of double honor especially those whose work is in preaching and teaching for the scripture says do not muzzle the ox while it is treading the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. So uh, that really ties in today too. And then uh, in uh, let me see here. Let's go to First uh, Corinthians twelve, and we'll start with verse twenty. Uh, six. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. It, it, it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you are part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking with different kinds of tongues. 
Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. And Paul says his greatest gift is love. Love, love among us. And then uh, in Psalms 84.10, it says, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things he with, no good things does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. So, uh, also I have a scripture here in Romans 12. Let me see here. When I do stuff, I just scribble here and there. 1210. Uh, it says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. So, uh, we're supposed to honor each other with brotherly love. And uh, anyway, you know, where it says I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God brings me back to a, to a man that used to go to church here. And he's, he's with the Lord now. His name was Carl Lindstrom. And uh, he's my friend. And he used to... And, and by today's standards or standards then, Carl was not a, a, a very good looking man. He, was, he had birth defect. He was, he was, his face was deformed and boy did he have a heart for God though. He loved God and he loved people. And when these doors were open, he was here. And he, his favorite thing was to stand in the back of that church and greet people as they come in. And I, I never forget, he would watch every time. And when my mom and dad would pull up, my dad would always let my mom out right there. Carl would beat his way out there and he would grab her by the arm and help her in the ch church. And uh, I used to, he always used to watch for me when I'd come in. He, he, I messed with him all the time, he liked that. And he, he was a Notre Dame fan. And I, boy, if Notre Dame would lose, I would really get on him. And if Penn State would lose, he'd really get on me. You know, one year I bought him a Notre Dame hat for Christmas. Oh, he, I couldn't have given him a thousand dollars. But, uh, but he, <clears throat> he was, he had a, he had a heart for God and people. And he, he thought that was his duty and his importance. Amen. And we all have things we can do in this house that would honor God. And uh, Ken, he's up here all the time. Uh, my wife and I clean the church. Rich, Tina, they, I don't know, they have so many hats, Rich especially. He cleans up here. He, he does so much. And all of you do. Teresa, she does so much for this church. But, uh, if you want to thrill the pastor, just if, if you want to really, really get his heart burning, just go ask him for something you can do here. And that'll put him on cloud nine, believe me. I have two pastors, it's bro or brothers, it's pastors, so I know what pastors go through. And uh, but anyway, and I, I use this, this scripture a lot here in uh, Exodus chapter 17 for Pastor's Appreciation Day, but I want to take a little bit of... And it, this is where uh, Joshua went out to fight the Amalekites. And uh, anyway, he, uh, he went out and he was, he was in battle and he was leading the troops and Moses was standing back 
And let me, let me read this scripture first. It won't take too long. I'm, I'm going to start with uh, Exodus 17, verse 8. It says, The Amalekites came up and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men. Go down to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the hill with my staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Uh, top of the hill. <clears throat> so Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Now it says here, Hur, Hur was uh, Hur, Hur was the son of Caleb. Remember Caleb, and Joshua. So uh, they they were they went up to the hill with Moses. As long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. When the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and he called it, the Lord is my banner. He said, for the hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So, there, there's a lot in this scripture. First of all, uh, Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is my banner. That's the Hebrew name for, for God. And when the Israelites always went out to fight, the these uh, musicians and the banner holders went out first. And many times the enemy fled before the army even went into battle. They were, they were so intimidated by the loud music and the banners and that, that was the phrase, terrible as an army with banners. And you know, when we, when we lift up our banners, what does it mean when you raise your hands? Surrender. Lord, I surrender. In my own power, I can't do anything. I need your help. I surrender my will to your will so your will can be done in this situation. And these are also our tentacles for the power of God to flow through. You know, when, when the lightning hits, you, it hits a lightning rod because it's up high. And, uh, you know, Moses, he became tired, so Aaron and her, they went... And they, now here's another important point of this scripture. They didn't stand behind them. They stood beside them. Why? Because if any of those Amalekites broke through, they probably had a sword on their side and they would have cut them down before they got to their leader. So that's what we need to do with our pastor. We need to stand beside him, not you know, it says, well, we're behind you. But we're beside you, Pastor. And we're going we're gonna to take everything coming at us together. You know, our, <clears throat> our chain is only as strong as our weakest link. You know, years ago, I worked for my dad in the woods, and that was before they had tie-down straps. Now you see all these log trucks going, and they have the big straps over them. Well, back then, we used chains. And the chains used to break. And we would repair them with what we called a cold shut. And they were a link that went around and they had an opening and then you'd squeeze them together and you'd peen them over with the hammer and that would hold your chain together. Well, guess, guess where they usually broke? In the weakest link. And that's the way the, the devil is. He, he says, uh, the, the scripture says he's a roaring lion seeking to devour those and, you know, uh, when the shepherds were out, the wolves and the bears and the stuff, they, they, didn't, 
they'd always get the weakest. You know, they'd get the ones that was falling behind or they'd get the ones that strayed off. So just remember, there's power in prayer, but there's power in numbers too. And uh, just, uh, you know, when one, one of us has a problem, one of us has a hurt, then we need to, we need to band together. And uh, it says one can make, uh, what, 10,000 flee and... Uh, how many of us can make thousands flee together? You know, uh, the devil's our enemy, but God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And, uh, but this, this story here portrays a classic uh, pastor's appreciation thing. I always read this, but God showed me some other things here today. And then it says that Moses built an altar the Lord is my banner, for his hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord, and the Lord will be at war. The, the, the Lord's at war against the Amalekites, and I don't know if some of this Hamas or Hezbollah or descendants of them or not, but, you know, uh, those are God's chosen people over there, and uh, they're going to win. They're going to win in the end. And... Uh, but what a massacre there. I, my heart goes out to those people, and uh, I just hope that, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen there. But, you know, uh, it says, I said there before about Ezekiel's war, and uh, Ezekiel war is the prelude to the coming of Christ. David Jeremiah was on there this morning again about, you know, God can come at any time. You know, we need to be ready. And uh, my brother always said, check up before you check out. And uh, so, but anyway, uh, Pastor, I'd like you and Carol to come up here. And uh, the ward members come up. Well, everybody come up. And uh, we're going we're gonna to have some prayer over you.